Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasting Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I am Brian Black, joined as always by Rob Henderson. Hello. And today we are talking about emergency repelling. So I thought we'd take this opportunity to kind of mention a product that I just got in, since this is gear tasting. Um, I just got in a Petzl Exo escape system to put through its paces and review, and I've been wanting to get my hands on one of these for a long time. So these are, these Petzl XOs have been out for probably, God, probably at least six years or something like that. But the benefit of these is they're marketed to law enforcement, to firefighters, to just kind of people that want to be prepared with an emergency escape system. People that want to jump out of buildings. <laughs> yeah, do it in a single bound. Safely, and make it to the bottom. Right. Yeah. But so this comes with about 45 feet of rope, and it's – Kevlar rope, so it's you know it's heat resistant, and that's mm-hmm. the big thing. So not only is it heat resistant rope, but it comes with something that resembles kind of like a grigri. If you're familiar with climbing, that's that's kind of like the. I was gonna say I don't know it. him. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know grigri. No, it's kind of the the self managed belay apparatus. So mm-hmm. basically, it's got a handle on it. A traditional grigri um, is a device that fits on a carabiner and it hooks to your harness or I, I say repelling harness but really it's a climbing harness or whatever you want to call it okay um but then as the rope feeds through it you have the ability to uh, basically belay somebody with one of those so that's typical at climbing gyms you go to a climbing gym and mm-hmm. you'll see a route already set up it'll have a basically a pulley system at the top where one end of the rope comes down and attaches to the climber and then the other end is attached or routed through a grigory so that somebody can be down there belaying them and that's controlled by another person yes that's not you correct so this there, device there are, is more there for are you yeah there are a lot of climbing gyms that will have self-belay systems mm-hmm. so meaning there's they're like a big uh what do you call it like a almost like an automated thing yeah okay. yeah i forget what machine they're called. assisted or something yeah yeah okay so basically you climb up and if you fall it kind of it's like an automatic descent control almost got it you know okay. it kind of like lowers you slowly so it doesn't drop you to the ground nice um but those are like the climbing routes they have set up but yeah What's great about this is that it actually goes a step further than the Grigory. So the actual exo system in at its core is is more than just rope, and it's it's not just like you can take a standard Grigory off the street from you know I think even Petzl makes a Grigory, so mm-hmm. you can't just take their standard Grigory and say I'm going to put together my own system because these aren't cheap. They run about 500 bucks for the system. I mean it's it's uh, it's legit, um, and the reason is because it's got Kevlar rope. It's all um, it's all hooked together, so it's already got carabiners that you would, you know, one side you attach to your harness okay. uh, if you're escaping, uh, like a burning building or something, and then the other side you route through something substantial in the room or wherever you are. To anchor. An anchor point, okay, yes. Okay, gotcha. Right. So, kind of before we get into the meat of the EXO, I, I do want to kind of talk about repelling as a whole, since we really haven't covered that. Mm-hmm on a gear tasting episode yeah i thought it'd be kind of cool to talk about yeah um i've been climbing for a long time it's something i'm i'm pretty passionate about i love rappelling um i love top roping i've been getting into a little bit of lead climb stuff but um the differences lie in that uh, rappelling would be having a fixed anchor point and everything is set up so that you can pretty much go off the edge so to speak and you're you're rappelling down something Mm -hmm. Um, technically you should always have a, a belay on you, even in a repel situation. So what you do in that scenario is that you would have, you know, anchor points and you always want multiple fixed anchor points. Not um, just one single, correct. like a tree. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you can, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not ideal. Redundancy is yeah. always good in climbing. And I pitch this all the time when I talk about it, you know, no matter if it's a, you know, a carabiner or a anchor point, you always want redundancy. So a lot of times I'll use uh, two carabiners, you know, opposing gates on carabiners if I'm hooking into something, too. Mm-hmm. It just, it just kind of depends. Um, redundancy is always key in climbing and backing up knots and ropes and things like that, too, is always, is always important. But, yeah, there's nothing to say you can't just 
you know, basically put a rope around a tree and rappel over the side as long as you know the other end of the rope is already on the ground. I was going to say, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with trying to be lucky. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, it just uh, doesn't seem to be the safest I mean, method. definitely don't take that as, like, my advice for right. anybody going out there and just doing that. I'm saying in a... In a scenario where you needed to egress from somewhere and you had a rope and mm-hmm. a harness and you were trying to get down um, and you had multiple rappels, so there was like a multi-pitch route you were going down, mm-hmm. you would need to retrieve your rope and continue to make your way down a, a ah, cliffside. Okay. So that's a way to to hopefully retrieve your rope. The, the problem with that is it can get stuck on a tree as you're trying to you know pull it down. So there's always potential hazards and that kind of stuff so yeah it's just yeah it's just it's a there's a lot to it it's complicated I mean, we're not going to cover it so in you're a saying i can't podcast. just tie bed sheets together <laughs> and leap out the window to safety oh you could try <laughs> yeah you could also try you know tying bed sheet corners to each one of your hands and each one of your feet and flying out the window Boom. like peter pan there you go you'll probably you'll probably glide to safety like a flying squirrel <laughs> parachute Which, yeah <laughs> But anyway, I think rappelling is a pretty cool thing to to get into. Um, it's something I've been doing for a long time, both you know top rope climbing and that. And top rope climbing, we kind of diverted a little bit. So that's basically you would have a fixed anchor point. So the same type of deal that you would set up a rappel on, you can set up a fixed anchor point. Um, and that's where I would use opposing gate beaners to basically put together a, a fixed fulcrum point at the top of some rock that you would mm-hmm. climb up. So... You would take that, you would route a rope through it, and then, you know, both climbers would go back down to the ground, and you just take turns belaying each other as you climbed up. So okay. if you think about that, sure. that fulcrum... Makes a V, basically. Right, exactly. So if one side breaks, you still have the other? No, this no. is this is one side's hooked to the climber, and then the other side's hooked to the belayer. So oh, okay, I understand. Oh, they're is, opposite. So you're going through one anchor point still. Yeah, okay, so cool. the belayer is taking up slack in the rope. Check. As the climber is climbing up, cool. so that if the climber falls, the mm-hmm. blayer has them, okay. you know, and and is typically anchored themselves to something like a tree or a, a stake in the ground or something that they're not going to fly up <laughs> when somebody falls off the rock, you know. Gotcha. So that's the goal. Uh, but you know, a lot of the gear involved in that is is pretty big and it's clunky, and you know, you have to carry a rope and all the all the carabiners and harnesses and things like that. So there's a lot of equipment involved in that. Mm-hmm. So it's very interesting to me that that EXO came up with this escape system because, I mean, this is this is a good fifty foot chunk of rope in here. It's technically forty five, so fifteen meters is forty five feet. But um, it's got pretty much everything you need, short of a harness, mm-hmm. uh, to get you to safety if you had to to bail out. And it's it's small enough to fit into, I, heck, I'd I'd argue a you know a messenger bag or a briefcase or something like that. Yeah, so it's like know. a really big book. But it's yeah. kind of squat. I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's the like size. the size if you put, took two California burritos and put them <laughs> stuck them together. That's about the size of this. So if you skip lunch, yeah. you can have it <laughs> in your messenger bag. That's my unit of measurement. <laughs> California, California burrito. burrito. Yeah. Anyway, so I think it's a pretty cool compact package. So when you open up the EXO, it's got kind of a Velcro flap that comes over, and you've got the kind of an X. They call it a um, I forget what they call this type of carabiner, ACR. Or... Hold on, they put the instructions here. Yeah. But anyway, it's basically like a um, a, a carabiner with a, a locking mechanism. Yeah, like a, it's just, like yeah, a dual yeah, it's locking. hook. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They make two different versions of that. Oh, one's so a, one's a hook and okay. one's a carabiner, and I don't know. But that has a lock on the back so that you have to toggle that to open it. Correct, correct? yeah. Okay. So with a standard carabiner, it's got a, it's got a dual locking gate, basically. Okay. So if I were to just take this and try to open the gate without squeezing the backside, it won't, the gate actually won't open. It has to be done on purpose. Right. That's cool. It's kind of a safety feature built in. But, you know, you would loop this around whatever you were climbing onto, go back onto the rope, you know, and now you've got got kind of your anchor point around an object. And this, the bag is basically set up to where you hook that up first Mm -hmm. as an anchor point and you, with a tug, you kind of pull out the, the other side and you hook this to you. Okay. And this is Grigri? Well, it's a Grigri-like device. Okay. I mean, I would call it an, they call it an EXO, okay. but you know, people don't really understand what an EXO is if gotcha. they're listening to the podcast. So, um, it's basically a, a self belay device, okay. really. So what it what it's got is an area that you hook to your harness, mm-hmm. um, and then it's got a handle that you pull. So, 
when you let when there's nothing no weight on this system or sorry when you don't pull the handle you're not going anywhere it's the kind of like a self-locking device system. correct okay. um, and that's the same on a grigory as soon as you pull this over to the side mm -hmm. um the rope's just going to start feeding so it'll out. travel like normal right okay cool Right, but then what's great about the EXO is that you can actually let go of this handle and it'll lock on you. Oh, okay, so that's right. the emergency aspect of like if your hand were to slip or something like Correct. that. Correct, cool. yes. Um, and while, you know, Grigory technically does that, mm -hmm. there's, it's not as compact of a package, you know, for one. Um, and two, there's got some other features on this, like the ability to ascend with this as well. So. Okay. Uh, with something like a little tie block, which is a little Petzl thing. I don't know mm -hmm. you guys watching the podcast can't see, but this is a very small device that just clips around a rope. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can actually put this together with kind of like a, a stirrup or a, a, like a And so this of functions to let you get a foothold on the rope? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, so it would lock. It basically bites down onto the rope and allows you to um, pull this back through the system. So it's very hard to describe. Okay. You know, but it lets you ascend words. Yes. versus just repelling. Yeah, I mean, like you do need about. a separate piece of equipment, which is the tie block, mm -hmm. to, to be able to ascend, as well as some kind of um, webbing or something to put your foot into, you know, to actually stand up on the Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, but anyway, it's a, it's a very cool compact system, and the ability to kind of egress in an emergency is, is pretty huge. And I've always... You know, every time I, I stay in a hotel, I typically always stay on the second floor. So, mm -hmm. meaning not the ground floor, but the mm -hmm. second floor. And I do that for a couple reasons. One is I always try to stay as close as I can to the uh, the stairs as well on that second floor because if something happens, I want to be near the stairs to mm -hmm. get out. Um, the second floor puts me at less risk for people breaking into a room or... Or just being creepy and looking in your yes, stuff. Yes, being creepy in general. <laughs> Um, you know, people don't like climbing stairs, so there's a little <laughs> less risk there. Um, and then also, you know, it's only one story up. So if something did happen and I had to break a window and jump, I'd be less likely to, to die on my way it down. It would suck less <laughs> yeah, yes. to hit the ground. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's where something like this comes into play too, because mm -hmm. I mean, with 45 feet, I think a story is what, 12 feet or something so? Like, yeah, like something 10 like, to 12 feet. Yeah. yeah. 10 to 12 so, feet So I mean, you could story. be looking at three or four stories. Right. This. That's cool. Technically. It just depends. Um, depends on what the the ground sure. height is. And well, and I mean, stuff. let's say that you're jumping from a 56 foot mm -hmm. building and it goes 50 feet. You can jump six feet. Yeah, you know, it would not. You know, it's not going to feel good, but it's an emergency. So, well, one of the other benefits of this too is that I think this is a seven millimeter rope. I don't know if it says in the instructions, but okay. um, it is. Let's see if it says it on here. It does not. Uh, but it's a very, it's a smaller diameter rope, and most mm -hmm. climbing rope is a lot thicker than this. And if you were to go out and buy a commercial Grigri device, it would not be able to function with a rope this thin. So, ah. and again, you've got Kevlar rope, which is heat resistant. So right. if you're trying to get out in a fire, sure. um, standard climbing rope is going to melt yeah, that's, um, in a fire. That would so, be no bueno. Yeah. Right. So that's definitely like purpose design. It is. It's very purpose exact. built. That's yeah. cool. So really, it's kind of, I guess, kind of an emergency escape device, but it's really purpose-built for escaping from a burning building yeah. as well because yeah. it's primarily marketed to firefighters. Mm -hmm. So they'll wear them on their belt and actually be able to hook up and get out of a burning building. Out if of something a were to happen to right. the stairs. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah. So it's a very cool device. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to putting it through its paces and, and getting some time with it. Um, again, you will need to supplement it with a harness, and I've kind of come up with my own accruciments, if you will, of what I would feel like I'd need uh, mm -hmm. to take with me. So if I was, I kind of try to put this together to say, okay, if I was in a, in a hotel, what would I need other than the sexo to, to get out? Mm -hmm. um, so what I kind of put together is I've got my harness and this is an old uh, Arterix leaf harness. And I say old, it's not like falling apart or anything, but it's probably four it's or five like years Not like a Vietnam old. era right, right, harness. Right. And I don't even think that they make this leaf harness anymore. I think it was like an H-150 or something. Don't okay. hold me to that, but uh, maybe that was the I Raiders still think they make other culture. ones. Yeah. I've heard really good things about yeah, them. Yeah, and Arteryx does make climbing harnesses. That's just, I mean, this specific leaf model because gotcha. they do these different government colors for their harnesses. Mm -hmm. But Arteryx is still making harnesses. Got so. it. Yeah, you can definitely look into Arteryx harnesses. I like them because they're very thin. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not a bulky harness. Yeah, it looks really light too. Yeah, that's it's cool. very light, and that's why I like it. 
Uh, but what I've kind of added to this is things that I would probably need to take um, is I've actually got a glass breaker on here. So I've got this little Smart. hook knife uh, that's got a glass breaker on it. So not only can I cut myself out of a rope or something if mm -hmm. I needed to, uh, but it's also got a glass breaker if I needed to break out a window to, to get out of it. Um, and then I've got a secondary carabiner here with that Grigri if I needed to ascend the rope. Um, then I've also got a spare carabiner um, with a fire suppression device from Blaze Defense System. So if I needed to actually put out a fire to escape from somewhere, I could. Are you um, sure you're not just plotting to, like, assassinate someone in a James Bond movie? Negative. <laughs> no. This so. is my glass breaker. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I, I, I tried to think in through on it. Them. I tried no, to that's great. It, so. I mean, you, you specifically highlighted fire is the big thing. Mm -hmm. So at worst case scenario, you have a little fire extinguisher with you, mm -hmm. you know? So that's yeah, a, that's I a really, really cool do love idea. these things. They're really cool. But um, you just can't use them on electrical fires. So they'll, it's like the A, B, and not the C or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember which one's electrical. Excuse me. What kind of fire are you? <laughs> yeah. No, it's, that's good because, I, I, I mean, fire extinguisher, I think people should have everywhere. I don't think that people have enough fire extinguishers but like you said you purpose built this and so to have something that could suppress it i mean even if it doesn't work on electrical fires still mm -hmm. you know you're gonna you're gonna run into maybe spray the rope down with it as you're yeah, jumping out or something like that you know to, to help it out yeah and i mean at the end of the day the rope is the big thing to to maintain the fire rating on you know obviously the harness is is going to <laughs> burn up, but yeah. it's attached to your body. So right. if you catch on fire, you're probably done for anyway. But the melting um, point of you is probably yeah. lower than the harness. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, the big thing is that your, you know, your carabiner is good and your rope holds up mm -hmm. to get you down out of the building. And then, yeah. you know, all bets are kind of off at that point. Yeah. Like, you know, you're away from the danger at that right. point. And that's the goal. Yeah. But I mean, a system like this, if you think about it, really every person that was with you would need something like this because i you know we tried to go through the the scenario of like okay so you're up there with you know yourself and your significant other and you both have to get down now so you've got one harness one mm -hmm. exo thing like how would you make that work so it's doable it's yeah. not the best thing in the world does it have any have information to, about weight rating uh, yes. I'm wondering what the max weight rating know, would be. It's probably in there. Yeah, I'm not because sure. Because that's what, what I'm wondering is if you could have somebody just basically... Well, the, I mean, the, and that's the thing with this rope, too, on. is it's a thin rope, but it's also tremendously rated mm -hmm. um, in terms of the strength of the actual rope itself, too. It doesn't have it printed on here, but I know, gotcha. that, I know that I read it's pretty damn strong. Well, that would be interesting if you could, I guess, kind of compare and see if the weight rating... Mm -hmm could handle two people. I don't know what the logistics of repelling with the second person on you would be, but... Well, I mean, with something like this, it's actually pretty easy yeah. uh, to do. I well, mean, really, they could like just it. grab on and, right. you know... Like in Batman, when he tells her to grab on. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's my repelling experience, is Batman. Batter battering. Yeah. When he's in the... <laughs> they're at that art museum, and he repels yeah. up. That's a good movie. But, I mean, kind of the essentials of, of repelling are a harness and a rope mm -hmm. and carabiners and things like that. And this isn't necessarily the most streamlined version that you could have of a harness. I mean, really, you could get into something like a Swiss seat, which is tied with nothing more than tubular webbing, like mm -hmm. one-inch tubular webbing. You could really make a harness out of that. And I actually wrote an article on, on making one of those oh, cool. a couple years back, so we'll link to that in the episode intel. But... Um, also try to link to a, a better Arteryx harness or one that's currently available. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure they got one. Huh? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I wanted to run through that to just kind of talk about this is just something to put that thought in your head yeah. because, I mean, it's something that I've always thought about, but I've just never done anything about until I was able to get a hold of one of these Exos. And it's a great thing to consider. Yeah, it's expensive, but, you know, it comes down to the whole what's your life worth thing. Yeah, and, if we were standing you know, in the middle of a fire and I said, hey, if you give me $500, you can live, you yeah. know, it doesn't seem like that much right. money at that time. I know, but <laughs> I get it. I mean, it's, sure. it's, it's a large amount of money to spend on anything, and it's just like anything that, I mean, you could what if your way to death on, well, <laughs> on all that stuff, like, oh, well, what's your life worth? Well, well that's yes, true. it's yeah. true. You could, you know, do everything you can. I mean, I could buy a tank because, you know, I don't want to die in a car crash i want to you know so okay could, well that that makes sense i could what's my life worth to death myself to death <laughs> that's true broke pretty much but yeah i i think it's a very valuable product and i'm anxious to to kind of do some repelling with it and, mm -hmm. and learn the system and 
I'm sure there's other features in here that I'm going to report back on when I write this up and say, oh, yeah, you yeah. can also do this. I've had great experience doing this, but I'm really looking forward to it, and it's a product I've wanted to check out for a long time now. Um, as far as, like, the, the actual repelling stuff goes, um, I would like to kind of talk a little bit through that on on gear and talk about the, the pieces of kit that yeah. are kind of involved in, in repelling just for a few minutes, too. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about the rope, and ropes always have a rating. Um, the, the different kind of ropes that you can get are either static or dynamic. So static ropes are great for repelling because they don't give. So if you think of static, it doesn't. So there's no flex in it? Correct. <clears throat> Got it. But a dynamic rope is going to have built-in flex, so it's almost, it's almost as though it's going to shock absorb a little bit if you fall with it. So if you okay. think about if I was climbing mm-hmm. and I fell, I would want a dynamic rope because it's going to absorb the shock a little bit. And not, so, so a static rope is more prone to breakage? It's not more prone to breakage. Okay. It's that there's no give in it. Okay. So there's, if you fell on a static rope, which if you're rappelling, you wouldn't fall per right. se. You know, you would, you're, you would basically be caught by the, you know, your rappel. Sure. So, I mean, in a traditional rappel, if you let go of the rope, you're just going to keep falling. Oh, you know? okay. Right. And that's where something like... The, this uh, EXO comes mm-hmm. into play is that if you drop your hands, yeah. it would stop your okay. descent, right? So it's kind of a descent control. And in traditional repelling, you're either repelling with something called an ATC, which is your air traffic control. Um, it's the same device that you would use to belay somebody. Mm-hmm. Or you're using something like a figure eight, uh, which the rope is running through mm-hmm. um, to be able to repel. But it's all controlled by your control hand yeah. so your brake hand really so as you tuck that rope around and kind of sit on it mm-hmm. as you're going down that's what's going to stop you from moving and it, it it's a lot more intuitive as and if you're you doing let it. that go you're just gonna Correct. fall yeah <clears throat> got it unless you're being unless you delayed device, yeah. so um unless somebody's got you okay. and that's why i talked about that in the beginning mm-hmm. you know you there's there's such thing as like a top belay so meaning that somebody would kind of be doing the same thing with the second rope that that top roping scenario I talked about mm-hmm. earlier with belaying. And all belaying is is basically you're taking the rope and it's running through a device like an ATC. So an ATC is kind of a – it looks kind of like a mushroom. So on the top it's got kind of a squarish piece mm-hmm. that the rope runs through and the bottom is kind of a wire – uh, loop. So you okay. put that loop onto your carabiner and you clip into it, but you're clipping into that wire loop as well as the rope that comes through it. Mm-hmm. So you're basically forming a bite in the rope mm-hmm. or you're folding it to like make a controlled a bite. Right. And you, you're putting it in the ATC and running it down. Mm-hmm. And that bite is, is matched by that wire loop that's coming off the ATC. And you hook both of those things into your carabiner. Got it. So then as, so one end of the rope, you know, comes up, it's hooked to the climber or wherever it's going. And the other end of the rope is coming off to your side, just like a rappel. And that's your brake hand with that. So as, as a climber is climbing, you are taking out the slack. So got it. The goal with belaying is to never, ever take your hand off the rope. So Mm -hmm. your control hand, not the brake hand, but you never remove the control hand from the rope so that if they fell, you would at least have one hand on the rope while you regain control with the second one. So Mm -hmm. the technique as you're belaying is that I kind of stick out, stick out my pinky and I'm almost passing the rope to myself as it's, as, as I'm belaying. It's, it makes more sense with kind of a visual, but, um, Belaying is a necessity to kind of learn, too. And sure. climbing gyms are great because they have those greegrees, and there's not as much of a learning curve mm-hmm. to actually learn how to belay when you're at a climbing gym. Um, but, you know, something like an ATC or a figure eight is important, not only for the belayer, but um, if you're doing rappelling for the rappeller, too. So that's kind of, those are the pieces of gear you would need. You could technically rappel from just a carabiner, mm-hmm. um, you know, using something like a munter hitch or, or something like that. But, um I like having the right equipment, yeah. honestly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with using it on a monitor, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's why I like having a climbing harness rather than tying a Swiss seat. I mean, sure, sure I can do it. And it doesn't seem like it would yeah. be as comfortable. <laughs> right. But, you know, there's more that can go wrong with, you know, a knot um, mm-hmm. repelling, and people will probably argue that and say there's – a muncher is more secure than a carabiner, and I, I can I can see both trains of thought, both arguments for yeah. that. Because yes, there's inherent danger in a carabiner if you forget to lock the gate, or 
you know, something malfunctions in, the, in a mechanical device, which mm-hmm. a carabiner is, you sure. know, you've got a, a point of failure in everything that you have. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of the deal with that. And then, so you've got rope and ropes are, you know, static or dynamic, depending on what you're doing, you would have one of those. And then a harness, you want to make sure that you know, you have a harness that is rated. So I think there's probably an ANSI certification somewhere on these harnesses, mm-hmm. I would argue, or I would venture to guess. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you want to make sure your carabiners have a really good KN rating too. You don't want to just buy cheap carabiners off Amazon or eBay or something like that. You yeah. never want to buy used equipment uh, when it comes to carabiners. That makes because sense. Carabiners have a lifespan, mm-hmm. and if you don't know what they've been in, and you don't know if they've been dropped or damaged or anything like that, you just it's a it's a life. It'd be like it'd device. be like buying used plates for a plate carrier. Yeah, <laughs> not a, yeah. probably not a good call. You don't know if it's been dropped or correct. Especially like you said with that metal, if they're powder coated, you don't know what's going on inside. Mm-hmm. If it's had too much stress or anything, and the metal right. is is not doing so hot. Yeah, and I mean harnesses are kind of another thing. I mean. I wouldn't technically buy a used harness myself, mm-hmm. but I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying that make sure you check everything over. You should always be checking your equipment, too, as you're mm-hmm. using it as well. I mean, that's a huge thing in climbing is you check your buddy, you check yourself, you know, and you have your, your buddy check you. You know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a round-robin thing before anybody gets on the rocks is, is safety. And yeah. safety is such a huge element of climbing, and I haven't really talked about it, but... I mean, just being safe is is tremendously important when you're talking about anything that has to do with, you know, rappelling or climbing or <laughs> potential like a, fall risk. It sounds like a climbing gym is probably the best place to start for somebody that wanted to get yeah, into it. Yeah, it is. It. Absolutely. That, they'd probably get a lot of that safety mm-hmm. aspect, which I think is cool. Yeah, and helmets are also important, too, if you're, you know, climbing on, on rocks like that, too, mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, a fall and a head against a rock is going to do some major damage, so... Definitely want to avoid that. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I'm rappelling or climbing, I'm I'm typically always using a helmet. So, but yeah, that's kind of uh, I guess kind of emergency rappelling in a nutshell. I wanted to kind of highlight the the EXO and talk about some gear and equipment. Um, awesome. But yeah, that's uh, that's our episode for today. Thanks for listening to Gear Tasting Radio. Remember, if you have questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting in any social media network, and we will get your questions answered here on Gear, T- Gear Tasting Radio or on our questions over coffee segment. Uh, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we would very much appreciate a review and a five-star review at that if you think we earned it. Um, having a five-star review increases our rating on Apple Podcasts. They'll show us around to more podcast potential listeners yeah. and get us in front of new eyes. So we would very much appreciate your help with that. Uh, last but not least, check out our crew leader membership. We'll link that in the episode intel. Uh, you can check out some of the benefits we have for helping support ITS Tactical, and we've got some cool stuff in return. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you next week.